Yo guys, it's Sandro. So this is the third continuing part to my semi-new player impressions on Guild Wars 2. If you want to see the first part of my impressions on the game, there will be a link in the description below. But if you are here after watching the first video, or even the second video, or are just interested in watching this part in general, welcome! Once again, this is a series for people who are deciding whether or not this game may be worth a try or worth their time since it is a free-to-play MMORPG. Or even for the longtime Guild Wars 2 veterans who are interested in hearing the rambling of a long-time MMO addict like myself getting into their favorite MMORPG they know and love so much. Now, of course, there will be a chapter set up with this video, of course, or timestamps in the description below, if you're interested in hearing about certain parts of the game, be it the story and lore, the gameplay, or the exploration. Be sure to leave a like, comment down below your thoughts, and subscribe, hit the bell icon to see future Guild Wars 2 or general MMORPG content, and get notifications from my channel. Now, getting back into the Norm personal story first, of course, Air reaches out to us because a person named Skari has alerted her of a threat arising north of Holbrek, the large capital of the Norns. Apparently, dredge activity has spiked drastically, and the dredges have been attacking more and more people, leaving many bodies with weird, unexplainable wounds. I arrived in Holbrek to speak more to Skari, and I am introduced to the three orders of Tyria. Those three orders being the Vigil, specializing in military tactics and organization, Brute Strength and Force against those who threaten Tyria, the Durman Priory, who believe in knowledge, intelligence, and scholarly power, will defeat the threats against Tyria, and the Order of Whispers, the secret agents who use guile, stealth, and their massive network of information to protect Tyria. I am told that the dredges have targeted a Durman Priory facility that has important information about the threat of the Elder Dragons and that the dredges need to be taken down, and this facility needs to be protected because a, another attack is imminent. I am given a choice between these two options, protecting the Durban Priory, with of course the Durban Priory Order, or join the Vigil Order and crush the dredges for the attacks they've done prior, and try to crush it before anything happens. Of course, me playing a warrior, and also a big burly Norn, I felt it, it was only right that I joined the Vigil in their very simple but brute force tactics. I then joined the Vigil Soldier up north, and we learned together that the Dredges used a whole Vigil squad as a test for a weapon that they planned to improve and iterate on, and completely killed the entire Vigil squad with it, which also explains the unexplainable wounds that they had. We then go back to Holbrook to discuss the weapon, and I'm given another choice, and this time it is either to destroy the weapon, to make sure that the Dredges can never use it with the Vigil once again, or steal the weapon so that we can use this weapon, their, the dredge weapon, against themselves with the Order of Whispers. I decided that this time to go with the plan of the Order of Whispers and not with the Vigil. It would be wiser that we steal the weapon and utilize it against the dredges, or at the very least find information on the weapon itself. We head out to the dredge hideout where the weapon could be located, we put on disguises, get, on the, get into the hideout, and find the key parts of the weapon which is a sonic cannon that dredges want to use against a large building, supposedly. We don't know what the building is yet, but that is apparently what they are going to use it for. Sadly, we weren't able to find the weapon itself, but we did find key parts of the weapon, so we have better information on what it's going to be used for. We go back to Holbrek with the prototype parts, and now we need to figure out what building the dredges are planning to strike. I am now given a third choice either between joining the Durban Priory to intercept and decode a dredge code to find out which building they are planning to strike, or finding the Order of Whispers informant and asking what building it may be if they have information on that. This time I decided to go with the Durban Priory to decode the dredge code and find out exactly what they are trying to do. I go with the Durban Priory, find the book decoder, kill dredges in our way that are trying to get us away from it, and figure out that the weapon is stationed in Underberg, near Lornar's Pass, and we head there. We arrive at Underberg and fight our way in, and find a dredge who disagrees with the other dredges and think that the weapon is insanity and is actually causing way more issues for the dredges than it is for us. After helping the dredge who disagrees with the others, he tells us that the weapon is actually waking up Elder Dragon minions, because the sonic cannon weapon uses dragon minion cries and that the weapon is going to be used to destroy the Durman Priory itself 
in revenge against the dwarves since one of the last dwarves is actually helping the Priory. I am finally given a last choice to decide on how we deal with the weapon for good, and join an order permanently with the choice I make. I can either choose the Vigil's Brute Force Tactics, taking down all the dredges in force and destroying the weapon with our massive numbers and also brute strength, choosing the Durban Priory, utilizing a silencing ritual that will disable the weapon for good, or choosing the Order of Whispers and utilizing stealth magic to sneak around all the dredge army and take down the leader of the dredges that built the weapon and take down the weapon silently. I decided, of course, again, since I am a warrior, a Norn, and the Slayer, to join arms with the Vigil and take down the dredges and the weapon head on. We take the fight to the dredges alongside the Vigil to protect the Durman Priory from harm, and we take down all the dredges, the dredge leader, and we disable and destroy the Sonic Cannon weapon before it can be used once again to mimic the dragon minion cries and stir the Elder Dragons even further. Overall, I thought this was a great storyline, honestly. It was very lengthy, it was a lot longer than the two previous ones, especially the most previous one. A lot more lengthy, especially, again, than the level 20 questline. But it kept me very engaged throughout the entire thing. There were multiple different choices I could have made, which I loved, and I'm very interested to know what the other choices could have been if I had chose them. Every part of the story kept me wondering what is the next part and what do we do next. I really enjoyed this part of the personal story. But I do think that wraps up the Norn-specific personal storyline. Overall, I very much enjoyed it a lot. The beginning was great, the level 10 story was very nice, the level, two, the level 20 story was a little bit short and not very exciting, but not too bad. And the level 30 storyline, in my opinion, was by far the best part of it. I had a very good time with the Norn personal story, and I cannot wait to get to level 40 and beyond to experience the other story quest lines fully. Now, moving on from the story, Warrior has still been an absolute blast to play and continue to level. I have still been very connected to the rifle the most, and the dual axes and the hammer as well have been super fun. Now that I have a very consistent way of getting the quickness buff, rifle, dual axes, and hammer have never felt better. They feel so much more fluid and exciting to play and fight with now that I'm attacking 50% faster nearly at all times. And I feel that rifle and hammer especially feel fluid with the quickness buff. I also decided to try out the dual one-handed maces and these weapons also feel very fun to play around with. Lots of stunning, lots of crowd control abilities, lots of vulnerability. They also feel great with quickness buff applied. I definitely want to give the dual maces more of a try since I am just way too addicted to the rifle so I went back to it so quickly. At level 31, I also finally unlocked my Elite Skill slot, which is the final 5th slot on the right side bar for new players that do not know about that. I decided to grab the Signet Elite Skill because it offers so much just in one button press. Though it is on a 40 second cooldown, the ability itself gives 25 seconds of multiple different buffs. Specifically, the Might buff for extra damage, the Fury buff for big critical hit chance, and a swiftness buff for a great movement speed buff. For a 40 second cooldown, that's really not that bad at all. It doesn't feel like, it doesn't really feel that bad at all considering the fact that the buffs last such a long time and practically for a good portion of the ability's cooldown. So that is the elite skill I chose just because it has so much bang for my buck. Now aside from that, as I said, I have an absolutely loving warrior. And I have been fighting the urge non-stop to go and try other classes because I really want to ex at least experience Warrior all the way up to level 80 before I try the other classes. Now of course that's not the end of me getting new stuff for Warrior or experiencing everything Warrior has to offer. Because we do have the elite specialization and stuff like that like I've heard from people in the comments below. But I am for sure going to try other classes as I have enjoyed Warrior so much thus far. I do want to get Warrior at least to level 80 before I start branching out again, because at least I want to have at least one class at level 80 before I, I try to disturb myself and go and try other classes. And I also cannot wait to see what I can do with my build making again once I hit level 45, which for any new players that haven't played, is when you get your second specialization slot to add even more passive traits to your character, and level 21 being when you get your first specialization slot. Now of course, we get back into Guild Wars 2's lovely world exploration. 
Exploring the northwestern parts of Snowden Drifts, which is the last area I needed to explore before finishing it fully, I was reminded fully of Skyrim once again. I just took a moment and looked around and took in the game's sights, and this part of the Snowden Drifts was incredibly snowy and many hills with some mountains, it was an absolutely beautiful area. It was also larger than I thought it would be, just like the first zone, and once again, the fact that Jeremy Soul did the soundtrack for the game made me feel right at home. I had to be mesmerized by the beautiful snow mountains. I stumbled upon a centaur encampment where I saw a player was trying to take on an open boss event alone against a centaur leader. I jumped into the centaur camp and helped out with the player with the boss, and there were tons of centaurs to kill in the area that gave me lots of XP. After that, I walked into another camp, but this time a smaller snow troll camp, which also had a similar boss event with it, but this time with a snow troll leader, which I took down with a couple more players. Now, after that, pretty much wrapped up the Stone and Drifts fully, and I finally made it on my way to Lornar's Pass, which is even larger than the previous two zones I had now 100%ed. It has double the activities and point of interest of Snowden Drifts to discover and find. I was actually baffled by how large Lornar Pass is. It's actually insane. Because I thought that the previous two zones were already large as is, but now this zone has nearly a hundred different things to find and complete to complete the zone fully. In Lornar's Pass, I first came across a massive cave system that had a lot of dead miners in the area that I had to resurrect and help for them in the quest in that mine quest area. I was easily stuck in that mine for a good half an hour doing the quest to help the miners, getting a vista, getting a point of interest, and also doing a hero point challenge where the boss and I killed each other at the same time. All of that just in one singular cave, surprisingly enough. I also have been noticing that the further I got into higher level zones as I level, the more difficult vistas and hero points there are to explore and find. I found myself on some visas completely stumped trying to figure out how to get up to certain parts of the map or failing at a parkour segment over and over and over again so I could get to the vista to, co to further complete my map completion. And it was also satisfying when I finally end up figuring out how to get to certain areas to claim those visas. And in terms of hero points as well, they are becoming more well hidden. In some cases, I am again having to do fun parkour segments to try and reach them. And some hero point challenges have even harder bosses now to fight, which is always very fun. Especially when I mentioned before, I was fighting a hero point boss and we ended up killing each other at the same time. And Lord Norse Pass is absolutely beautiful to walk around in and adventure in. This time, instead of snowy hills and forests and hills, it is now completely covered in very large and deep valleys, which is an absolutely beautiful sight to behold. I had to take a moment just to take in the sights once again. Guild Wars 2 does not, they, they, they do not struggle with open world design at all. It is so damn good and I will never get enough of it at all. And that pretty much concludes my impressions on the level 30 to 40 range in Guild Wars 2. I have still been absolutely having a blast and I think this is the most fun I've actually had so far with the series. The story was great, my class is still continuing to get more fun, and the open world areas are just continuing to get larger and larger, more beautiful, and more fun to adventure in. And Guild Wars 2 has continued to be an absolute treat just to take my time in to chill, relax, explore a vast open world, and just have a good time. If you are a new player and are wondering if Guild Wars 2 is worth playing since it is free to play, and also wonder if it's worth your time from levels 1 to 40, I can wholeheartedly assure you that it is worth trying out. If you have made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. I would appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. I 100% have more Guild Wars 2 content planned in the very near future, and I have also been covering Lord of the Rings Online as well. Make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more MMORPG content, and of course Guild Wars 2 content if you are interested. Thank you so much for watching again, and as always, have a great day, have a great week, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.